Hello everybody, they were finishing medium voltage. This has been quite the adventure, I've quite enjoyed this stainless steel line so far. Now we need to make some polyethylene stuff. Okay, it is as simple as running polyethylene through the metal bender on the 10th setting. We're going to go ahead and make polyethylene plates. We will do this because I believe the recipe also requires... Oh, it doesn't. It just... It just I take that out. Take that out. Okay. Uh, yeah, we got the aluminum, though. Check this out, fellas. Remember when I accidentally left the machine on the 10th setting and made a 12 aluminum? Yeah, it's coming in handy today. Capacitor! Where's the capacitor? Fellas, where, where on earth is this guy hiding at? Oh my, what is this thing? Tantalum capacitor. Very sad amounts of energy. Now, thankfully, we don't need to add any LEDs to this. If you're wondering what LEDs are, don't worry. You should probably know that. But okay. Polyethylene sheets go through the wire mill. We take out the steel that we are batch crafting for some reason. And that took five seconds to do polyethylene because it's just insane. The thin polyethylene plus polyethylene makes the capacitors. However, this requires medium voltage as you can tell, because our machine is not running. Heading into the medium voltage hall, we can go up to the assembling machine, shove everything in, and, s and call it a day. Now looking at the next stage of this process, it's going to be a much more painful process. We're getting to the point where we're going to need a reaction furnace. My large quantity of capacitors have completed. Now we can move on to CPU boards. CPU boards are going to require a mask, which is something I'm going to hate making. Yep, it requires a photolithography mask for a CPU. Although I did do a run of um, circuits. We should probably do some more of these. We should, we should definitely do more. I'll, I'll go ahead and do that real quick, just to make sure we get those done. Because we all, we're going to need them for in, in a few sh Steps here. Thank goodness this contains chemical black dye. The only thing I need to do now is make some glass powder. Now we can use the photolithography mask for the wonderful whatever this is. Uh, I don't even know. A CPU. CPU. Yes, we're going to make CPU today. We're going to go ahead and run CPU like so. It requires a dope silicon wafer. What the heck is my silicon wafer cheating or something? My silicon wafer is cheating at the Olympics. It needs to be doped. How do you dope this? Silicon dioxide wafer. Well, th that's not helpful. What the heck is that good for? Probably nothing. UV light box. Uh, that is that is silicon wafer, but uh, what we need? Uh, is, what is this one? No. Chemical vib vapor disposition. Ion implantation and doped. Doped. High purity anti. Requires clean room. Oh wait, this one doesn't. Thank goodness. My gosh, what we're we gonna do? Like, how are we gonna get a clean room? <laughs> Thank goodness we don't need a clean room. Well, I purity gallium might just be the way to go. Um, as far as the as this is concerned, there's also I purity aluminum. We can look at that uh, if it requires gallium. Yeah. Oh, gallium and phosphorus. That is the way I'm gonna go. Gallium and phosphorus. I don't have to do anything stupid. Maybe gallium and antimony if I can. Okay, so the phosphorus process starts off with phosphorus in an autoclave. This gives you do 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 this, and you need four of these to get this, and then from there you solidify it to get what you need, which is this. Um, so that is the cheapest process I have seen for this. Uh, th this is okay. Th this is gonna go. We're gonna clear this out. We're gonna set this up again. So the first step in this phosphorus nonsense is we have to go grab some white phosphorus. Not white phosphorus. That would like burn our face up. We have to grab some of this, mix it with some water. Now I do not have enough phosphorus at all, and that really sucks. Maybe we shouldn't have made all them superconductors. All that nonsense. That's a mistake. I probably shouldn't have made. Phosphorus is mixed with water in an autoclave, giving you high purity white phosphorus vapors. Okay, so it, from what I understand, we can actually do this in a blast furnace using fluoroapatite. If you run this with silicon dioxide at 27 and carbon dust, and I just so happen to know a furnace that has both of them. 
It's upstairs. It's in the stainless steel line. And it's normally used for making ferrosilicon. And funny thing is, this guy in fact outputs carbon monoxide. Which is exactly what the fluorapathy recipe is. So, this is the perfect machine. Uh, can you do a run of this for me? Oh, you need more. Silicon dioxide? Are you, are you kidding me? Well, darn. I, I just so happen to have an entire stack of silicon dioxide. Here you go. Have all of that silicon dioxide you need. Oh, wait, really? This gives you... Whatever that is? Fluoride? It gives you fluoride for this? Holy crap, that's nice. That's actually incredibly useful. I think I need another blast furnace for this. And carbon's just getting supplied back into the machine, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, so this is insane. It gives you fluorite, phosphorus, all kinds of goodies. And guess what I like? I like some fluorite in the morning. Fluorite is used as flux in the um, stainless steel production, so I think we will be using that. Well, phosphorus is easy now. Ha ha. Nice joke. It's not. But hey, now if we need to make more superconductors, I know which blast furnace to go to. That one right there that's already hooked up. Already automated. Now that we've done all of this, we just need to add in two more machines. A solidifier. Another machine. And then we're good. But first we need to make a pump. Because making pumps is crucial to this process. Now we need to go in and grab some copper rods. Nice. Let's run these through here. Do that real quick. Run this long copper rod through the metal bender. And then we have a distillery. This is no time at all to make this line. The high purity phosphorus line will be complete in no time. And I need yet another solidifier. What should I do now want to make? Where is it hiding at? Where is this machine? I need this machine now. Please give me a solidifier. Oh crap, I ran out of glass. That is not a good thing. Okay, we have all of the machines we need. A solidifier. We have the distillery. And we have everything else. All we need to do is get everything set up. This guy has a thousand liters of fun stuff in him. And he's ready to send to distillery. But what setting does distillery need to be? Is my question. Uh, so let's see what this needs to be. No setting at all. If we set it to any setting, it might just ruin it. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what this does. And... Fluid auto output. Nice. From there. Fluid uh, auto output to the right. Not to the back. Uh, we need to go get a wrench. We are approaching 10,000 items crafted on the... Uh, well, we're passing 10,000 items crafted on the table. We are at 10,300 items crafted on the crafting table. It is insane. How much does one need to craft? Now, does this... How does this work? That goes into a mold for uh, powder. Yeah, it needs to be powered. That's a dryer! What the heck is this? I did not ask for a dryer. That's water. We do not need water here. We just need to get the white phosphorus out of the dryer. That is not where white phosphorus goes. That's the recipe for a disaster right there. Okay, put it in a basic fluid solidifier instead. There, that's more like it. And that's the high purity white phosphorus line done. The other line is a high purity gallium line, which is um, agonizing. From what I understand, this takes multiple steps, requiring things like crude gallium and stuff that I don't really want to make, but we can begin. Well, this is an option. Vacuum distillation. Now that is the way to do this, and we're going to need another room for that. Um, I've been told we have a lot of excavation ahead of us, and that is very true right now because, uh, yeah, we definitely... Yeah... Need, need, we need another room. <laughs> or, or, hear me out, right here. This place is nice, and uh, we're not, I don't think we need to make this thing very big. It just needs to be like a small guy, doesn't it? Oh crap, I have to excavate that. Dang, I was gonna have a floor up there. Okay, so this is one of those machines that's really big and uh, you might consider it awful, but it is very easy to make. It just requires the um, steel casings, I think, and we have a lot of them. A lot of steel frame boxes. 
Uh, probably the hardest part of this is that we need to make two medium voltage pumps, and this is going to be uh, very not fun if you don't have the components, but I'm pretty sure we have all the components. And I think we can just do that no problem. Like so. Oh my. We are missing a lot of components. Except these can be made easy. I'm pretty sure those uh, just require two of them. Well, well, you need to make more of these guys, I guess. <laughs> I bet I can just run this thing through the, uh, thing here. Put the CPU back there. Um, this guy. Through... Here? No. How about here? No. Alright, so we got those guys cooking up. We just gotta cook up some machine casings. And huge steel pipes. Which is gonna cost 24 steel ingots. But don't worry, because it's not that bad. There's one last thing we need before we can even assemble this. And that is a... Plate. Now you're probably questioning what on earth is plate going to do. Well, plate is going to help us a lot. Yes, you'll see. Uh, see this one that looks like a fan blade? No. That is not what I wanted. We're not making circuit boards again. Please just make this. Thank you. This guy. He completes the extruding quest. But also is essential for making rotors from steel. You cannot make steel rotors in the fluid solidifier. Well, with the low voltage one, at least. The last thing we need to do is bring glass to an arc furnace. And I happen to know an arc furnace that can handle that. Upstairs. <laughs> and there we go, vacuum distillation tower quest completed. We're gonna make our first stainless steel wrench. No, that is not a wrench. I asked you to make a stainless steel wrench. Not a rotor template, please. Make the stainless steel wrench now. Third, third time, fourth time. Come on, make the, make the stupid wrench, please. This is not acceptable. This is unacceptable. Make it, make the wrench. Just make the wrench. And the reason we made this wrench is so we can remove this pipe. Literally, that's it. Only reason we needed the wrench. Because you can't remove um, those pipes without the fancy wrench. Well, there's a few more components we need, and I'll go ahead and get those done right now. So gallium is a byproduct of electrolyzing aluminum stuff over here. We have 39, and this is going to be very essential. Because it's the cheapest way of getting these doped circuits. Now then, uh, we have basically everything we need. We just gotta fix this up by putting in... A hatch here. Input bus. Yes. And I think all we gotta do is run it through there. And that should do our distillation. I'm not sure how it's distilling this. Is it melting it or something? I don't know. It gives us high purity gallium. And it takes six seconds to do so. Costing around 120 EU per tick. It uh, costs a bit of energy. It's medium voltage. So don't worry. But that's our high purity gallium. Sorted. Now we need to make an advanced ion implanter, which is a very fancy machine. This thing here looks, uh, incredible. The only components we're missing now are these last two circuits, which we're going to go ahead and make the boards for now. Because we don't actually have any boards left, we've ran out. It's painful, I know, but we should be able to make this, this is no problem. And we have the ion implantation device now. It is medium voltage, it can take in 120 volts, so we need to place it here somewhere. Probably here. It's a machine for this. High purity phosphorus, high purity gallium. Now, I think they need to go in order, I'm only assuming that, and uh, I think we just add this in. Maybe some of these. Maybe some more. There we go. And it works like magic. And holy crap, does this thing make some really funny colors. It's got laser beams in there, clearly. But with our dope silicon wafers, wafers, we can finally make circuits. Yeah, these guys are expensive. And I'll go ahead and make these and then we'll be back. These silicon wafers are going quite well. They're being produced very fast at the chemical plant. We're now able to produce these in the sawmill. All we need to do is cut them up. Nice. And now we have CPUs, which we can use to make the next thing, which is this. Integrated circuits. Oh my. Second type of MV circuits you can make. They're from CPU chips, transistors, capacitors, and resistors, and red alloy wires. This is a faster way to make, faster and more efficient way, to make MV circuits. Oh, nice! 
Okay, so we gotta take these over to the medium voltage area. And that makes circuits. And it makes two for each one. Uh, these are quite expensive, these CPUs, so I don't think we're gonna use all of them. Because this is insane. But nice, we got integrated processors. Alright, so all we need to do now is make the, uh, final circuits. These are the, the transistors. Uh, this uses copper wire instead of the fine red copper wire. If you use the red copper wire, you're just gonna get it. You're gonna get more medium voltage stuff. Which, these guys are nice. Really cheap. Way of making medium voltage circuits. Way better than the other methods, I guess. We just gotta get components for it. Oh my gosh, that makes five microprocessors. And I thought we were already making, like, a lot of circuits, but now we're making a, a load of circuits. Microprocessors. Ten microprocessors. And, like, no time at all. However, to get further, we're gonna need to get some high-purity iron... Uh, purified iron 3 oxide, and then we're going to get the inductors, and finally, high voltage processing.